What is going on trainers? Drumvillain here bringing you some more Pokemon Go PvP content and today we're talking about the Master League Premier Classic Cup which is running alongside the Open Master League which unless you've got level 50 legendary Pokemon is not going to be very competitive for you. So this is probably going to be your best option if you're not one of those super hard raiders that's grinding out the maximum XL candy for the perfect legendary Pokemon and maxing those things out. If you're new around here, by the way, and you want to see more teams and more showcases and more lines to run in the different cups, be sure to hit the subscribe button. It helps me out massively, helps the channel grow and helps spread the videos around if you like the content with a like and a share too. Now, if you started playing more recently and you haven't played Metagross Community Day or Gyarados Community Day to get Meteor Mash and Aquatail on those two respectively, this team doesn't have either of those on. So if you've only been playing for the last couple of years, this team might be more suitable for you and be easier stuff for you to access. On the lead, we're bringing Togekiss, which is a very, very strong fairy type for the Master League in general. Absolutely shuts down the dragons, the fighters. Just has to watch out for those steel types like Metagross, which is still common in the Master League Premier Classic, but not quite as much as before. So to help cover that, on the say swap, we're bringing Community Day Special from this year, Ursa Luna. Now, this is a purified Ursa Luna, but we don't have Return. We're running High Horsepower and Thunder Punch, because Thunder Punch can absolutely devastate Gyarados, and High Horsepower can devastate Metagross, Excadrill, things like that. So a very, very strong bulky pick in general. And then in the back, we're bringing Conkelda, which is here to bring the counter damage, mess up those steel types. It's got the Stone Edge for one-shotting Gyarados, Dragonite, other picks like that. It's a very, very strong pick. I think it's slightly better than Machamp, although Machamp is slightly spammier. So there is some unique play between the two, but I think Conkelda is the better option if you have access to it. But Machamp is a completely fine alternative with Rock Slide and Cross Trap. You can even run close combat for some nuke damage or Dynamic Punch for slightly harder hitting coverage if you want. We're mainly going to be using Ursa Luna as the say swap, and there's one main reason for that, and its name starts with G and ends in Iarados. But you'll see how that plays out in a little bit in the video, but for now let's jump into some matchups and see how the team works. Ursa Luna lead, we're expecting them to run either Thunder Punch or Ice Punch, so we are going to swap out into our Ursa Luna and see what they choose to do and see if there's something we can bait out that Togekiss is going to be able to mop up that should clear the way for Conkelda in the end game. They did build up enough energy for the high horsepower, which is why we shielded there, and now we're going to choose to bait with a Thunder Punch because us landing a high horsepower at this point would absolutely devastate them. And we do get that shield back, which is nice. We're now on an energy advantage. But they catch a high horsepower on Dragonite. So a fantastic play from the opponent there. Absolutely shutting down all that energy from Ursaluna. If they go for a farm down, we will make it to a Thunder Punch, which won't knock them out. But it will stall the switch timer because they waited so long to swap into Dragonite. We can bring Togekiss back in and absolutely lock this Dragonite down. It doesn't have chance to get to a Hurricane or anything like that. It's just going to be a superpower, which we double resist. It's going to farm them down. And we're expecting the Ursa Luna to come back in and throw a Thunder Punch at us here because they do have just enough energy for a Thunder Punch. But we should survive one Thunder Punch. It'll get us pretty low. And then we should be able to maybe farm down. They might get to another one. We'll just have to see. Now, they are going to get to one more Thunder Punch. That's fine. We're going to let this go. We're going to put it all on Conkelda in the one shield scenario to see what it can do. And there's the Gyarados in the back. It's an Aqu um, no, Aquatel, sorry, Waterfall Gyarados, which is worse than Dragon Breath for Conkelda in this scenario. Dragon Breath is slightly easier for Conkelda to tank its way through because it does less damage over time. So we have to catch the Aquatail, which we do. Absolutely fantastic. We were counting up to, I think it was eight or nine waterfalls we were counting for. And then they have to get to two Aquatails now to finish us off. We can just get to this last Stone Edge and KO them. And we're going to take the win. And you might think, why did you not bait with the Dynamic Punch? We needed to save the energy. And that's because the energy discrepancy between Dynamic Punch and Stone Edge is so low. And we needed them to not call a shield bait and let a Dynamic Punch through. That would have cost us the game. That's going to be a GG. All right, next matchup. And this is against Marty. And if I remember right, this is a bad lead. Yeah, it's an Excadrill lead. So we're going to say swap straight into Ursa Luna. And they're going to bring in the Gyarados. Now, normally most Gyaradoses are running Dragon Breath, which is a slightly better scenario. And the Aqua Tail Waterfall combination is going to be very threatening to Ursa Luna. But you can see we can still tank them very, very well. And you can see the tackles are adding up. The Thunder Punch will take them out easily at this range if they let it through. But this Gyarados is going to be able to control Switch Advantage because it has Waterfall. If they have Dragon Breath, you can control Switch Advantage with um, Thunder Punch. But here, we're going to let this second one through because there's nothing. Well, there's no point shielding it. We would get farmed down with Waterfalls anyway. We're going to bring in Togekiss and start building up energy because we're feeling like at this point we're going to have to throw a flamethrower at the Excadrill. So we need all the energy we can get. We'll let this through. It's just Aquatail. It's fine. Then we're going to swap straight to Conkelda 
and see because Concelda with a single shield advantage can do a lot of work as well because it can just bulk its way through a lot of fast moves and one of those dynamic punches or stone edges is going to do a lot of damage to most picks in this meta. Let the draw run through, that's fine. It's not going to take us out and we figure there's a risk that whatever's in back has a harder hitting charge move that would do more than a draw run. So we let it through. Turns out it's a Milotic in the back which is going to be able to farm us down entirely just before we get to the second dynamic punch so really unfortunate there. We have to let this do and risk that we survive it because the Excadrill will get to one charge move and we have to be, we wouldn't be able to survive it. It's a Surf, which we can survive. We don't, the Excadrill can't throw because it needs two charge moves because we still have a shield. We get to the Flamethrower, we're going to take them out, we're going to take the win and that is a good game. And that's a great showcase of what the team can do against an Excadrill lead with a Waterfall Gyarados in the back and still able to take the win. Gyarados lead in this matchup and this is a Waterfall Gyarados, so not exactly what you want to see. But we're happy to stay in this matchup and just play it out as it is and then see what we've got in the back because we know we can either get shield advantage or switch advantage from this matchup. We're going to let the Aquatel through, throw an Ancient Power. This will take them out if they don't shield it. If they do, they'll farm us down and that is fine for us. We're going to slightly take a slight loss here and then we're going to choose to come in with Conkelda, not Ursa Luna because we expected them to throw an Aqua Tail blindly, um, and which Ursula Luna would take super effective from. They actually throw a Crunch, which is resisted by Conkelda, so best case scenario. And in comes a Garchomp to meet us. We have a shield advantage at this point, and an energy lead. So we're gonna get a dynamic punch through, and then we could shield up and farm down with counter, but I wanna preserve this shield advantage because Garchomp isn't the best answer to Conkelda. So we're assuming that they might be weak to Conkelda in the back. We choose to catch an Earth Power, because Ursa Luna can just tank hits like that because it's an absolute beast. And we actually pull out a Mammoth Swine in the back, so they are weak to Conkelda in the back of this team. We're going to choose to let that move through and put it all onto Conkelda for this counter damage and hope that we can just farm down entirely and then throw a double dynamic punch at the Gyarados in the back, which we do, we get the farm down. And now we're going to go for the first dynamic punch. They should get the shield and then we throw the second one, it should take them out. The opponent realizes the position they're in let the dynamic punch through and we're going to take that win. GG's again. Bit of a risk to bring in Conkelda to farm down Gyarados um, after we lost switch advantage because there's a big chance they have Togekiss paired with the Waterfall Gyarados but it worked out in our favour and we were able to secure that win. Sometimes you just got to go with your gut if you've got that good feeling and sometimes it pays off. Togekiss lead, we got to stay in. We can't risk getting Conkelda lined up with this thing because the charms will just obliterate us. It's not too bad in some scenarios if you've got a Stone Edge loaded because you can hit them for big big damage but you don't really want it lined up otherwise. They're going to swap out into a Swampert, which is less common in the Master League Premier Classic than you'd think, but it is still a very strong pick because Swampert is just broken in every league. You know what it's like, that Mudshot Hydro Cannon spam. But we can comfortably take one on Conkelda and then threaten Switch Advantage with this Dynamic Punch, which if they shield, which they do, that's fine. We can shield up one more Hydro Cannon and we might just beat them to the next charge mover. It might even be CMP tie, which Conkelda should win. Just, yeah, it is CMP tie. And we're going to get this dynamic punch off and should take out the Swampert, which means that the, the Togekiss is going to come in and farm us down almost certainly, which isn't super ideal, but not the worst scenario. And we're going to bring in Ursa Luna here because the Togekiss has an Ancient Power slash Flamethrower loaded at this point, and they would absolutely annihilate our Togekiss with it. Um, we figure we can just comfortably take that damage on Ursa Luna instead rather than having to spend the shield or make that kind of choice. And it turns out that there is a Mammoth Swine in the back. This is a very, very bad situation for us. We have to catch a move on Togekiss. We wait till they build up to two Avalanches and they hold off throwing when they got to two Avalanches and that secured the win for them there because now they can just throw a double Avalanche here and take us out. And that's going to be our loss. We're in a very tough position with Mammoth Swine in the back there having used up Conkelda, but we didn't really have a choice. Um, with the Swampert coming in after the Togekiss lead. It's a little bit tough position for our team to handle, but GG's to the opponent. Jumping straight into matchup number five, and they bring a Florges on the lead. And this is the single best fairy type. It's the single highest rated pick overall for the Master League Premier Classic, but it is very, very hard to hunt for a perfect version of this thing. They are quite rare in the wild of any color, to be honest. Um, so to get a hundo and then get the candies and max it out and stuff is quite a task. I don't have one. Um, for sure, but I know I do see the odd few in the Master League Premier Classic. And this thing can beat Togekiss in kind of a straight scenario. We are going to give up a shield and try and get Switch Advantage here, which they are going to give us. And they bring in Excadrill. 
And because we see the extra drill typings come in, we swap straight to Ursa Luna because we don't want the extra drill to get all the excess energy that it knows it can get because we threw energy. On Togekiss, there's no risk of the flamethrower coming through anytime soon, so they can get a big energy advantage, which can cost us very heavily. So we should just swap out to Ursa Luna straight away, tempt them to swap out, which they do, into their own Gyarados, which is absolutely great for us because we can take that out with the Thunder Punch, as you saw. Now we can start spamming moves at the Excadrill, and we know it's Thunder Punch, we know it's Double Resisted, they don't know we don't have Fire Punch, and um, also we just need chip damage because the counters from Conkelda are probably going to be um, the main source of us taking this thing out at this point. We're going to let this first move through because we can survive one charge move. They throw a Rock Slide for God knows what reason, it's exactly the same energy cost as Draw Run, so an insane thing to throw a Rock Slide, it might have been just been trying to flex on getting a shield with a Rock Slide, even though it wouldn't have mattered either way but they're going to surrender there and it's going to be a G. G. So a 4-1 set against a variety of hard meta lines with negative and neutral leads. So you can definitely tell this team can hold its own while it's on the back foot. And it does even better when you pull in those Dragonite leads, the Dragon Breath Gyarados leads, the fighting leads like on Keldas and Machamps. You're in a much, much stronger position there as well. A couple of matchups I want to talk about now with a few scenarios where I make mistakes that cost me quite heavily. This lead, Gyarados lead into an Excadrill save swap, it should be really, really positive for me at this point. We're a little slow swapping into Conkelda, we throw two charms on Togekiss rather than just one. So we have to shield up this drill run because it'd be CMP tie which we'd lose anyway. So we might as well farm them down entirely and have the Stone Edge to throw at the Gyarados which we presume is going to come back in in a moment. So we either get the shield back or we do big, big damage to this Gyarados. So I'm still able to control switch advantage and neutralize the slow counter swap situation. And if they try and farm us down, we're going to get to another stone edge. And this again, going to do big, big damage. If they let it through, are they going to shield it up? They don't. Boom. And here's the mistake. We aggressively swap in Togekiss, thinking, oh, you yeah, will swap down the Gyarados. So I snap it down and deny the energy. I'll just catch it on Togekiss or whatever. And it locks us into a Metagross, which is insanely bad for us because the Metagross can get some excess energy off of us. Here, we don't have our switch clock ready to go. And Metagross doesn't lose really badly to Ursaluna. Um, the high horsepower is going to absolutely annihilate it, yeah, but you're very slow to get to it. The Meteor Mash, the Bullet Punch is going to add up. Um, they're going to let this through, I believe, as well. This Thunder Punch, which they can survive fairly comfortably. And now it's a fast move, um, bulk down kind of situation. Can we fast move them down or they're going to fast move us down? We expected the counter swap because we knew the Gyarados had another charge move, so we were able to catch that on Conkelda, which is a slight saving grace, and we farm them down, but they still have a shield, so we're just going to have to go for the farm down, they get there first, they farm us down, and we take an L in a game that we should have definitely won in. Looking at the Excadrill say swap out of a Gyarados lead, it was very obvious there should have been something like a Metagross in the back, and to swap in Togekiss like that and lock it in was incredibly dangerous and really did cost us heavily in that game because it really just allowed the Togekiss to get completely sacrificed to that thing. This match is a quick reminder on why you should always be thinking about why your opponent's doing what they do. This is a Dragon Tail Gyarados, which is like I say, and quite impressive to have as a shadow and all that, but why would they stay in against a Togekiss? It's such a bad matchup for them and they're going to let it go down, which means they must be super weak to Togekiss in the back. There must be some other dragon or fighter, which we bait out. They bring in a Snorlax in the middle. We bring out Conkelda rather than Ursaluna because we were predicting there might have been a fighter rather than a dragon in the back because that would have been a weird pair with Dragon Tail Gyarados. And it is a fighter, it's the Machamp. So this means that Machamp's out of the way, cleared the path for Ursaluna. We're going to be able to get a shield advantage in this matchup. We know that we can take out this Machamp with Togekiss. Absolutely no worries, and then Ursaluna is definitely going to be able to handle that Snorlax, especially now this Machamp's giving up both shields, which means we're going to give up one shield here, that's it. If they throw a Rock Slide or Cross Shot, whatever, we don't mind. If this is Rock Slide, it takes us out. We don't mind, it's fine, whatever, we'll just let it go through and go down. We save a shield for Ursaluna, and here's the Snorlax, Shadow Snorlax. And the great thing in this matchup is you're double resisting the Lick Damage of Fast Move. The Super Power is super effective, but you can survive it, really really comfortably there's that superpower does about half which isn't all that threatening because let's say they throw one they start throwing more superpowers it's going to get weaker and weaker as well so Ursaluna's in a very strong position in this matchup in general the high horsepower is going to absolutely obliterate snow let's take them out and give us the win right the thing in this game i want to talk to you guys about is right at the end game at scenario so i'm going to speed through this a little bit faster than usual just to get to that point so you can see the position that we're in floor just lead that's fine. We're probably going to lose this um, lead matchup, especially since we let the Moon Blast through and they get the attack debuff, which is absolutely devastating for us. We're just going to throw this Ancient Power here, which they can let through because attack debuff really makes a big difference in this matchup. And then 
I'm gonna throw a disarming voice. We're gonna let it through. It's fine. Bring in Ursa Luna to farm down because you don't want to come in with a fighter against a fairy like this and try and farm down, especially if we've still got some energy. Moonblast comes through, hits us, they don't get the debuff. This is fine. What's gonna come into meters here? So Snorlax, Shadow Snorlax specifically, and we're gonna go straight for the high horsepower. We're not sure if they're gonna shield. They might do, it's probably a predictable shield actually, probably should have gone for the Thunder Punch bait. We're gonna swap in Conkelda now, we've got a shield advantage and we pull out a Dragon Breath Gyarados. So we can probably take out this Gyarados with a Stone Edge, it's gonna do big, big damage. But that Snorlax has some energy and Conkelda is more our win condition than Ursa Luna is. And there's, the key thing here is Snorlax has to throw superpower against Ursa Luna to take it out. It only has to throw Body Slam against Conkelda. So our win condition is Snorlax having to throw superpower first and having to handle Ursa Luna first. Switch timer comes up. We realise a second too late after tapping to throw a counter there. And if we'd have just swapped straight into Ursa Luna there and caught this body slam, we probably could have won this game. But by making that mistake, the Snorlax can now build up safely to a superpower. It's now it's got some time because we're a little bit energy dry. Take us out and then it debuffs itself at the end game, which doesn't matter and gives them the win. Okay, this game, the screen recording kind of bugged and then I got it recording again from partway through the match. All you need to know is Togekiss mirror match on the lead. They swapped into an Excadrill. We took it out with Conkelda and this is when their Togekiss comes back in and just shields up a Stone Edge that we throw from Conkelda. But the situation we're talking about is at the end of this matchup anyway and again is about finding a win condition when you're in a pretty bad spot. So we're kind of expecting a Gyarados in the back to handle opposing Metagross that we might have had on our team since they're leading Togekiss, like something hard to answer the Steel types. And it turns out that, we found them down here, fine. And it turns out that they've got an Escavalier, an absolute crazy spice pick from the Master League Premier Classic and an interesting one at that. But our Togekiss is low enough where the Excadrill, uh, sorry, Escavalier, could potentially farm us down and get excess energy. It's got counter that's super effective against Ursa Luna. So we just have to not shield. And they actually try and acid spray us. They could just throw a drill run there and just really take us out. And we're like, no, we need more time. We've got to gamble on another acid spray, which they do. Which is absolutely crazy that they went for double acid spray bait when um, we only had one shield. They knew they had the time to get around it. And that meant that we could get some chip damage with the Thunder Punch. And we can actually make it to this ancient power on Togekiss, shield up this Acid Spray because at that health range, Acid Spray would take us out. And then we'll be able to get to the Ancient Power and take them out, which is a crazy win and one that the opponent definitely just kind of threw the game away. In, not meaning to, but by throwing Acid Sprays against Ursa Luna was their lose condition and gave us a win condition. If we'd have shielded up the Acid Sprays, again, we'd have lost. So that our, the only condition was we didn't shield two Acid Sprays and that they threw the Acid Sprays rather than um, draw runs. So that's the team guys and it's great to see Ursa Luna having some play in the Master League despite being a little bit let down on its fast moves. I know we were all hoping that it would get Shadow Claw and it would become an absolute monster in the Master League in general. But with Tackle it's still able to put some serious work in over time because that fast move damage really does still add up and it can put some serious work into a lot of matchups. And would other picks do better in this role? Maybe Excadrill would be an interesting um, side pivot that would have some slightly different but also very similar kind of coverage and weaknesses. Mamoswine would probably do pretty well in the role as well, but honestly the bulk of Versa Luna goes a very long way. Being able to survive a Meteor Mash or being able to survive like an Aqua Tail, the um, Excadrill would get absolutely smashed pieces by saying for Mamoswine is quite a unique trait of Ursa Luna that does carry it quite well in some common matchups because Gyarados is common in the Master League and Ursa Luna has a better matchup there than Mamoswine or Excadrill does. So let me know what you guys think of the team down below. Subscribe if you want to see more teams from me. Thank you so much for watching. You're all absolute legends and I will catch you guys next time.